you come up on a person doing magic on the side of the street, if you ever travel to some cities, you run into this, could be New Orleans, could be Chicago or New York, and they're doing their little chicanery, and people are like, wow, and they're giving their money, and they're wanting to know how to, that's, that's men doing their magic. And the scriptures say, beware of such men, especially when you go into a congregation. that They do some impressive things, and... I've had people say to me, well, I've seen it with my eyes. Well, yeah, but the scriptures also say that God sends them strong delusion that they might be believe a lie who would not love the truth or believe the truth. Beware. Yeah, God's in it. God's sovereign in who he saves, but he's sovereign in who he condemns as well. And you want to follow all that stuff? God might just let you go down that path and enter right into condemnation. People say, well, you know, they talk about Christ. That's not preaching Christ. I hear politicians talking in this kind of language. that somehow ours is the Christian culture that we've got to preserve. And if we don't, these other nations are going to come in and take it, take it away. If you still think that the United States is a Christian culture, I'd like to talk to you about it afterward. <laughs> it's anything but. In fact, you go back and read the Founding Fathers, and I know this just destroys a lot of what you find in religious books, but this nation was not founded on the gospel. The men that signed that Declaration of Independence were at best what they called deists, that somehow God created the world, set it in motion. Now he doesn't want to be disturbed. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work and make it something that's going to be habitable. That's pretty much the, the sum of it. Every once in a while, God, like a clock, will reach down and kind of wind it up again for us and set it back down, but, you know, the power's in your hands. That's just the same old free will religion that's always been around. That's what this nation's founded upon. And that's what religion is about, you see. And again, I remind you, Unlike so many messages that you hear, Canaan is not a picture of heaven. If it were, then Aaron would not be saved. Moses would not be saved. Uh, Canaan was a type of Christ. It was a type of rest that is in Christ and a type of the promised rest to those who rest in him. But you'd have to agree as with myself in this flesh, so often we don't rest. As much as we know and believe concerning Christ's finished work, how many times we find ourselves struggling and striving with what men think we ought to be doing and with what we've been brought up with and our consciences are very much alive. Now, the blood has purged us from dead works. There's no question the blood of Christ, but in ourselves, we're still like Moses. We don't enter into that rest, our experience, because we're in this flesh and we struggle. We lay awake at night. We think upon things that are so contrary to the gospel. And yet, if our salvation depended upon that, we'd be lost. We'd be lost. Thankfully, it's not.